ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. It came down to one game to decide who would move on to the New Providence Softball Association's Ladies' Championship. The Platinum Pool Sharks and Johnson Truckers on the diamond last night, and they gave fans their money's worth and more. Both teams came out swinging, and this game went to the bottom of the seventh with the Sharks up 12-11. From there, the Truckers refueled and pounded out some hits. That combined with a couple of errors by the Sharks would be the difference. Truckers win on a walk-off 13-12 to advance. It was a long fight. We're getting to go down like this. We needed a champ we needed to go to championship. I know I was gonna hit it over. That one we really didn't need it. Even if I had to fly out and she to catch it, we still would have win the game. I can't say nothing else. We played bad. I mean in the top of the seven we leading by one run. We get three out, pop fly to the center field as she drop it. Next person back, fly ball to left field as she drop it. The third out, the short sub throw the ball to first base, the first baseman drop the ball. At this part our third year to get us a unit. At some point in time, we got to make the little simple play. Next up in the title series, the Truckers will try and dethrone the defending champion Sunshine Auto Wildcats with game one scheduled for tomorrow night. It's a good fight, but I think we, we get more bats and we get pitching. We done in the game. We done, they done had a couple of days rest, they on, they on a little slack, so that's a sweet. After returning home yesterday afternoon, Shawnee miller Weba wasting little time making the rounds. She was invited to the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources for a meeting with Minister Michael Pintard. The former sports minister presented Shawnee with a number of goods, including produce from Bamsey, Kong Salad, and even a straw bag. Minister Pintard told Shawnee that she is a symbol of athleticism, a practice that breeds discipline, and even more importantly, healthy eating habits. A part of our mission is to ensure food security and it's not just about producing uh, food, it is about producing healthy food in a way that it would help to sustain our people. And uh, we are hoping in campaigns going forward that we would have an opportunity for the powerful brand that is uh, Shawnee Miller Weibo to be associated with this ministry. Living a, a healthy lifestyle is definitely important for not only myself but also for the country and um, yeah, I'm hoping that we can take another step in that direction. Uh, so thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, obviously competing for the season uh, for the Bahamas and yeah, I look for so much more to come. After excelling in the 2018 track and field season, decathlete Ken Mullings has become somewhat of a poster boy for the athletics program at the University of the Bahamas, but he's still able to keep a level head. I don't really think about it like that because it's, I love the event, so I don't really let the, the pressure weigh on me to let me to stress. I just like to be more relaxed and go out and attack to get better. I love to compete in this UV uniform, especially how we just became a university Mingos in the Bahamas. I love to go out there and show them that we could do this at home. I see the Olympics and World Champs in my future, and I plan to get there to my coach Edna Rule and Mr. Cartwright in Portworth. I use they, they are my tools, I'd say, to achieve these goals. And talking about UB Athletics, the Mingos men's soccer team on the road this weekend in the Sunshine State. Their first match was this afternoon against Florida College in Kissimmee, right outside of Orlando. The team started off strong on defense, which head coach Dion Gadet said was going to be key for a win. And they even managed an early corner kick while keeping their opponents at bay. But in the 40th minute, Florida College finally broke through, finding the back of the net, and they took that 1-0 lead into the half. In the second half, the Heat started to get to the Mingos, and Florida College would score two more goals en route to a 3-0 victory. Uh, for the last, I think, two and a half years, has not been defeated. Um, we played them last year, and this team beat us down. Uh, even though the score was the same last year, they really manhandled us, and we got away with a score of three love. I think. Today we demonstrated that we've grown up a bit. Um, we still need to grow some more because we, we got a bit tired in the latter part of the game and uh, we gave away two uh, concessions that, you know, on a normal day I think that doesn't happen. UB returns to the pitch tomorrow against Johnson University and that match starts at 4 p.m.
Well, local baseball umpires being given the opportunity this week to earn certification status. We get that story from Amajal Knowles. Some local umpires taking part in a week-long workshop. According to Chief Umpire of the Bombers Baseball Association, Martin Park Burroughs, the workshop is designed to improve the quality of officiating here locally while seeking to make the games more competitive. The guys from Dominican, they do this umpire clinic, which we, which we think is very needful at this time. Uh, the BBA, we saw a vision that we're, we're going to need to bring in new umpires, but we don't just want to bring them in. We want to give them material, we want to train them before we put them out there. Barros and BBA President Samuel Rogers on why the training is necessary. Baseball is growing. And, you know, we have three different, uh, we have Elutra, we have Grand Bahama, we have Abaco, we have Nassau. Nassau have three, four different uh, leagues. Uh, we need to try and get everybody. We had, we did the one in Freeport. So after this, now I'll have to go to Elutra and go to Abaco and continue on doing it so we could get everybody on the same level. That's why we're trying to make sure before the 2018-2019 the, the season start that um, we get all the umpires them, um, who wants to be involved, involved from Nassau, Freeport, some from Abaco, I think one or, one or two from Elutra, um, to make sure that when the games, when they're officiating the games, it'll be a more, uh, uh, they have a more better idea of what um, umpiring is all about. There are also plans to expand the workshop to Family Island. What we're trying to do is we're trying to, to, to get everybody involved. We don't want to leave nobody out because, like I say, all our islands are playing too. And the game is improving and we need the officiating to be at the same level. The umpire clinic is expected to wrap up today. For Zenith Old Sports, I'm Amajal Alno. From the Government League basketball season, the Cybots are in danger of not winning the regular season pennant for the first time in a long time, and that's because the first year Panthers are still undefeated. You know the story of the rabbit and the tail, eh? You know, the, 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 the rabbit jumped out, but at the end of the day, um, the turtle caught up and won the race. And this team is a championship team. We have won um, three, of, three of the last four championships and four of the last five championships. Um, so, you know, they're playing some good ball, they're putting in a lot of work, I, I really admire that. Um, they're doing some of the things that we used to do, uh, what we call our cyber chairs program. We really have a good unity with, that, with those guys, but at the end of the day, I can tell you those guys behind me, they don't want to give up the championship, especially to a first-year team, knowing how difficult it was for us as a first-year team when we came to the league, and it took us about three years before we could win the first championship. So. They're not going to just allow the Panthers to come and win or the Aces to come and win this championship. If they want to win the championship, they got to go through Cybots, and it's just that simple. Now, while the Cybots have already lost to the Panthers, Cybots coach Wade Watson is still not sure whether or not he'll even have the chance to face them again when the postseason rolls around. I don't know if they can make it to the championship, you know. I, 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 you know, I'm still not certain about that, but the reality is one loss could cost a big destruction in the team, based on my experience. But um, if they make it, and we be there, I guarantee you, we have a mantra that we're not going to lose any games in the playoff, and we're going to try to uh, accomplish that. After 18 years in the ring, boxer Misha Major Payne will bring his pro career to a close next month at the C.I. Gibson Gym. He explained why now is the best time to walk away. I'm 36, about to be 37 in October, you know, and like I say, my passion is for boxing, helping youth development. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on with these young kids in the community today. You know, they're they more violent, more vicious, and they just need someone who could show them the right way and the right path. And I think the sport of boxing, which has helped me growing up in the Camp Road community, you know, Scrawn's Alley, shout out to Scrawn's Alley community, you know, um, it's really helped me to change my life around, you know, because I was a troubled young kid, you know, growing up with both parents, you know, in society, we, we like to say, you know, oh, the father figure, the male figure. I had both parents. I used to get arrested, get suspended from school, get in fights at school, and boxing helped change my life around. So I want to be able to give back to these young kids and let them see there's a better way, not other than where we live in a, in a city community. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight comes back after the break.